Welcome back to the shop. Today, I'm gonna to show you four upholstery hacks on how to make tools that you can use in a, in a shop or in your garage that could come in real handy and save you a lot of money. Stay tuned. Okay, this first hack is to make a long button needle. About the longest you can normally buy is around 12 inches, uh, which will do a lot of things for you. Every once in a while, you're gonna run into a situation where you could use you know, a 24 inch, a 30 inch, even longer than that. We have on occasions at this shop uh, when we needed to button, say, a 40 inch uh, bolster or something, had to make a, uh, needle for that purpose. Obviously you can't use a 12 inch needle to button a 40 inch bolster. So, so what you can do is custom make your own as you need, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to make a 24 inch one here and I'm going to show you where you, how you can order one. It's going to cost you 20 bucks or you can make it yourself with just a little piece of edge wire. see here all I'm doing is flattening flattening out this end you see it's getting flat there and spreading out to about what looks like a regular needle so what we're gonna do now is drill a hole in it The typical thread that you're going to use whenever you're going to use this tool is going to be what's called hand tufting twine. We call it button twine, but you can you can kind of get an idea, you know, this is what it looks like. I don't know if you can see this. Here's what the box looks like. And you can see the twine in there. Now that we've got this end, uh, you know, pretty much started, uh, we're gonna go to the grinder and we're gonna go ahead and put a, a point on this so that you can obviously stick it into whatever you need to. But while we're there, we're also going to smooth this off because we don't want it being rough going through your fabric or anything. All right, now I have a 24 inch functional needle. You can see a point on it. Now I'll probably take some fine sandpaper and kind of smooth these down, you know, a little bit more. And I'm gonna take this uh, and wipe it down with some mineral spirits because edge wire comes with a little bit of a coating on it 
and I wouldn't want this coating to get on any of the fabric. So we're gonna clean it up and uh, call it a needle. And I could have made this needle any length I wanted. I could have done a 30 inch, could have done a 50 inch, could have done a 52 and a quarter if I wanted. So uh, it's whatever you need. Uh, that's how you can make one. While we're here by the grinder, we're gonna go into hack number two, which is this is an old uh, Phillips screwdriver, I presume. And this is a new one. I paid probably $2 or less for this. And you can get these at garage sales for a nickel if you have to, so. But this tool here, um, by just taking and grinding these points down, and you can see how I've kind of got it, um, you know, this to my this amount of, uh, you don't want to over grind them. And this one's do a little bit of a touch up sharpening, which I'll do. But what these this tool uh, replaces to me is this, a regulator. I have chewed through numerous of these uh, since I've been in this business. And, and currently these things are running close to $10 each. And like I said, you can get these things cheap at a garage sale for a quarter if you have to. So do you want an upholstery tool or do you want a homemade tool that'll actually do a better job than the upholstery tool? I'll also show you another tool you can see right here. Now that is that Berry uh, staple puller. They're all right to have, but I've wore a couple of those out in my time too, and they're not cheap either. And honestly, I haven't used one of those in probably 25 years. So I've mainly got by on these type of tools for getting staples out and nails out and tacks out. I generally, you know, get by with this and my pair of dykes uh, do most of the heavy lifting for me when it comes to stripping. I'm going to grind down this cheap Phillips screwdriver, which is about the length. This is the perfect length. I really enjoy this one. This is about the same length, and I got this at Lowe's real cheap. And like I said, you can get these at garage sales. You may have them in your uh, garage right now. So um, I'm going to grind one of these down and make it like this one. And while we're at it, I'm going to show you how I adjust my, uh, whenever I buy a brand new pair of wire cutters or dikes, whatever you want to call them, I always uh, take them to the grinder and modify them that, so that they'll do a better job for me here in upholstery. And I'll show you that while we're here too. I now have this kind of grind down enough. I could actually go to work with it. I mean, you can get nitpicky with it and and grind it down and make it look, you know, more perfect, but this is gonna get the job done. And the thing about it, tools like this is they're, I'm gonna guess they're using harder steel because like I said, I don't wear these out. Uh, I've had, I've been using this for years and I can assure you that this wouldn't have lasted near as long as this. So if you want a good tool, I mean a good hard working upholstery tool that's gonna get a lot of your staples up, uh, nails, whatever it is, uh, this is a cheap way to do that and a very, very efficient way to do it. All right, let's move to the third hack. Uh, this is a brand new uh, cheap pair of wire cutters or dikes I got at Lowe's for, I think it was $9.99. This has always been the style I prefer for all around upholstering. You can get smaller, more pointy ones, uh, but they're just not powerful enough when trying to dig tacks and staples. Uh, this is the best uh, one that I've found. You know, it's got a little bit of a point to it, but it's not overly it's still got a you know a fat area it's, it's stronger um, just performs better for me so 
But one thing that I always uh, have to do when I get one of these is I'm gonna try to show you. You see how thick this is and then at the area uh, in, in here, uh, there's a recessed area, you know, to where you get to the actual metal. So when they're brand new like this with that thickness right in this area here on the, you know, near the tip, uh, it's harder to get down to shorter staples with it or tacks. So what I like to do is grind this area down a little bit right here, um, just a little bit and get it where you can see, you can see that, I can't tell if you can get it in there. But you can tell there's a V right in this, right in this area here before it gets to the where the, the metal meets. And I like to grind this area down and get that a little bit easier to get to the metal part so I can get down closer to the staple. Let's do that. Let's see if you can tell a difference now. Now you can see where I grinded. It's just what I'm trying to do is knock it down so that I can get a little better access to the point. And knocking some of that area off here allows me when I'm down there to get really a decent bite that I couldn't get with all that meat in that area. Now there's another thing I do to it also because when you get a brand new pair of cutters, well, obviously they're sharp. Well, uh, the thing about, you know, mainly what I use these for is to pull things and not cut things. So one thing I like to do is try to dull these cut, you know, at least in the area about halfway you know, halfway, you know, you can see there's the distance from the tip to the bottom here. I like to get in there just about, maybe even three quarters of the way, you know, or five eighths of the way, whatever you want to call it, a little over half and, and knock that off. I mean, just try to dull that up just a little bit, uh, not a lot, but just enough that it doesn't cut your staples every time you try to pull them out. I don't want to go crazy with that. Cause like I said, I'd, you know, I still would like them to have a little bit of cutting power when I need them. In the past, you know, when I've been pulling staples, it's like I let it naturally dull till it got to the point where it finally would do a good job. But then I learned, you know, with a little bit of help, uh, you can get it there a lot quicker and not have all that frustration of cutting your staples too much when you're, as you're trying to pull them. One thing I consider real important when you're sewing up a pillow is to make sure you stretch the pillow evenly before you sew it. What I'm gonna show you now is a little trick I'll use. It's a cheap way that you can stretch that pillow without having to go buy special uh, pillow stretchers or any of those type things. Uh, let me show you what that is. What I'm doing is sticking a three inch upholstery pin in the corner of this pillow as you can see here, I'm going to nail it into this wood at an angle 
that's strong so that when I pull on it at the end, I'll keep that pull down to the bottom of it. And then I'll come to the other side, do the same thing, uh, get it pulled tight, and then lean that uh, needle uh, at an angle so that when I tap it in, it'll be at a strong hold. If you enjoy these videos, hit that like button, show a little love. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do it now, now. And don't forget the notification bell so that you can catch future videos. Thank you. If you enjoy these vittles, <laughs> vittles. <laughs> you enjoy these ramen noodles, pop <laughs> 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 <laughs>